there was this experiment. There's a few experiments, actually. There's one on puppies, and there's one in 1894 with a, Rus- a Russian physician uh, called Marie de Menekin, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, who kept these uh, dogs awake by constantly stimulating them. And then to see like how a lack of sleep would affect them, right? So it was fascinating what happened is because after a certain amount of time, I think if I remember correctly, it was something like two weeks straight, they kept the dogs awake and they had to constantly like work really hard on the last, I think, week or so to keep them awake. And think about it, no sleep for two weeks straight, if that's how long it was. And apparently the, the dogs had died. They just died, you know, because they didn't have sleep for so long. And there was actually another experiment four, four years later I'm seeing by Lambert, Daddy, and Julio Terosi. How, how did they keep him awake again? The, the uh, they just they kept him like stimulated. I guess they just kind of mm, just like caffeine or something. Yeah, I don't know if they used drugs or not, but I, I think it, they could have, or maybe they just kind of kept playing with them, or every time they fell asleep, they just kind of pushed them or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but these other people, Lambert and uh, Gilio, they kept dogs awake by walking them until they died, which. The, wow. Those dogs that says died after nine to seventeen nine to seventeen days of no sleep. So just think about that for a second. That's only a little over a week, and that's how that's that doesn't seem that long, you know. But nine days. Wow. And then they so just, after nine days, they they died. Yeah, and so it's saying that both of those experiments showed that there was changes in body temperature in the blood cells. And there are hemorrhages in the brain. I just, I just, that just blows my mind. So, so were they, uh, were they being fed during this time as well? I'm mm-hmm. sure they were, right? They were being fed. Yeah, right. just no sleep. Yeah, because it's saying that um, it was unrelated to food consumption. So, I'm assuming they must have kept feeding them and all that stuff, like food and water. That's crazy to think, man. Like that, uh, you know, not sleeping at all can can lead to death in just a couple of days crazy because then you jump to human beings so you can look at animals that's one thing but what does this look like in human beings and you think oh no no human has done that but actually there's this guy famous guy called peter Tripp. he was a radio personality person and it was in 1959 that he wanted to test sleep deprivation and break like the world record or something like that so he wanted to stay up like as long as he possibly could and i think i think he did it live on the radio or something like that so that you know, he was being held accountable for what he was saying so that he would constantly update people on the radio of like his status of staying, staying awake. And apparently he stayed up for a total of 200 an hour, 201 hours, which when you calculate that, that's about um, eight days straight. He would take eight and a half. So it's kind of mind blowing. So that's, that's not nine days, but, and he, he didn't die from it. But what happened is He started hallucinating only about after 72 hours. And a lot of people who talk about sleep deprivation, we've actually done it too, because some people do it on YouTube or for fun. They say they start hallucinating after only three days of no sleep. So that's just like, what? It's kind of like, why hallucinating, right? Why why does the brain hallucinate? It it just kind of loses sense of reality. With Peter Tripp, you know, it started out with him being in a bad mood. He started feeling more depressed the longer he went on. And then after a while, it says it became incoherent. So like he was saying things that just didn't make sense anymore. So it says after 100 hours without sleep, he started having trouble doing a mental agility tests that they were having him doing. And he got to the point where he couldn't even take it anymore. He couldn't stand it anymore. Um, like the the games or the... Yeah, like they must agility. have been having him do like mental kind of games to see how the sleep deprivation was affecting him. It was, it was almost like the stress... He couldn't yeah. handle. It said it says that he hallucinated one of their um, scientist coats being composed of furry worms, and then after 120 hours, he went to a hotel, and when he opened the drawer, he saw a fire come out of it, and they ran out into the street for help. So, like at that point, he's kind of like losing touch with reality, you know. And he said that, and at that point, it says he started accusing his doctors of staging the whole event to test him. So he, it's like he forgot the original thing he was trying to do. You know, after 120 hours, it's like, because he started, right? And then at that point, he's starting to blame the doctor. So he doesn't even know, you know, he can't even remember anymore. It's kind of, but yeah, to get to your your question, 
from what I remember from the book I read, it says that his personality changed so much, like it permanently changed. And it was such a different kind of change that I think his wife ended up divorcing him. Wow. It damages the brain in itself too, right? Because if it's always active, it's never reaching that delta state of rejuvenating. You know, it's always in the in the alpha or beta state, which is the fight or, fight or flight state. Then it's always like, it's almost like a predator is always there. Like situation where people can't actually go to sleep. Yeah, like they, right. but they, but it's natural for them, oh. you know? Yeah, I've heard like that. it's not like insomnia, but it's like they're they're people who just they they don't need to sleep. Like it's a rare case where like they can just be like take a nap and then be okay and just keep doing their life. Yeah, I think uh, Leonardo da Vinci did that. He uh, he slept in like three hour or two hour increments. You could speculate why he was so creative because we say the creativity kind of spikes right during certain sleep stages. That's what that reminds me of. Yeah, but I, I think this specifically is like they didn't sleep at.